In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to record the audio that you make in Music STP, and where to go to find the recorded files. All audio files recorded from inside the Music STP program are saved to your project folder. Because of this, it's very important to remember where you've saved your project on your computer. For this tutorial, I'll be using the tutorial demo project that we created in a previous video. I remember that I saved this project to the desktop, but you can save your project anywhere. Just remember where you put it. We'll come back to this folder later in the tutorial. Now for this tutorial, I've gone ahead and loaded the project so that we're on the system board, and I've created a few modules so that we can quickly generate some nice sounds. Here's what I've come up with. I'm sure you can come up with something much more interesting, but this will be good enough for now. Any sound that goes to our master mixer and out to our speakers can be recorded into an AIF audio file. This is controlled on the system board via the recording tools section. We took a glance at this in a previous video, but let's pour over more of the details now. On the left, we have a text edit box where we can type in the name of the audio file we'd like to create. The default name can be used if you'd like, but let's see how the text edit box works now. Notice that I simply click in the box, delete what's there, then type in the name I'd like to use for the audio file. I'll title mine something simple, like tutorial track. Once I've selected my name, hit either return or enter to set the type text as the current name for audio files. Note that you can also set the text by simply clicking somewhere else in the program. This may seem like a funny way to set the name, but hopefully my reasons will become clear in a moment. Next we'll want to decide if we're going to make separate files for our dry mic signals. This system was originally intended to manipulate live audio signals from microphones or plugged in instruments. Often, when recording sounds created from live instruments, we may want to keep a copy of the original instrument signal before we make all the changes that the system allows for. The dry mic option, when toggled on, will create two additional files when a recording is made, one of the first mic channel and one for the second mic channel. This makes it easy to get a clean copy of a good performance so that you could keep playing with an idea you've come up with. It also comes in handy for mixing purposes when mastering a track. This option is toggled off by default, but we'll turn it on for the sake of this demonstration. Currently, the first two inputs are the only options for recording dry audio, but in the future a system will be created to enable the recording of up to 16 input tracks at once. With the audio file named, and having determined whether we really want to include the dry mic signal, we're ready to record. Remember that any signals going to the master mixer and out to the speaker will be recorded, so keep that in mind when you're prepping your setup for recording. In other words, if you hear it, you're recording it. Hitting the record button will begin the recording process. Two things happen on screen to let you know that recording has begun. The record button switches to a stop button, and a timer appears to keep track of how long your current recording has been running for. From here on out, anything that we hear is being recorded. You can record for as long as your computer has memory to hold the data. For the sake of this video, I'll make the recording brief. Now that the recording is done, let's see where it's saved to. Navigate to your project folder and open it. Looking at the subfolders, we should be able to find one titled Recorded Audio. If we open this folder, we'll see three audio files waiting for us. The first thing I'd like to point out is that the tutorial track files have a number appended to the end of them. All three of our files are called tutorial track 0, and the dry mics also have the word mic1 and mic2 appended at the end. When recording a new file, an incrementally increasing number is automatically added to the end of the name. This ensures that we can make as many files as we want without writing over our previous tracks. To make a new recording, we only need to hit the record button again. Now, when this is done, we have tutorial track 1 waiting for us. Recording twice again will get us tutorial track 2 and 3. Hopefully, this shows the efficiency of naming the file before recording. Since we don't need to stop and save a new name every time we record a file, it's easy to make multiple takes of, of an exploration, and it facilitates the quick production of multiple audio files. Note that recorded audio is not automatically added to our project audio files folder. 
in order to add this here, we need to open the manager and copy the files over from there. Alternatively, we can manually move the audio from the recorded audio file folder into the audio file folder, but this requires a restart of the system before the manager will recognize the files in the folder. That's all for this video. In the next tutorial, we'll look at automation and how we can control module parameters through the automator boards.